Okay, so here's another example of using Templator on layers that are already animated. So here what I've got is one composition, and this baby is just essentially an animated end tag of a label. And what we're going to do here is just kind of replace these terms that are inside this uh, animated graphic. Okay, so, you know, we can see that. And then I've got this other composition here, which is similar. Uh, it's just a different graphic, but you can see we've got you know, a few uh, animated text layers. Uh, some are using the, uh, you know, text selector animation, and then others are using like path-based animation. So Templator, again, is really good at integrating with existing animation. So you don't really have to do much, you know, to get Templator to work for you. Okay, so let's start by looking at the spreadsheet that's driving these comps. So I've got a spreadsheet here, and I've got two worksheets. One worksheet's for the circle composition, the other is for the diamond composition. So you can see here I've got, for the circle one, I've got a target, and then here I've got, you know, all the terms that I want to have appear in the graphic. And here I've just got the terms and, you know, a year that displays in the graphic as well. Okay, so let's hop on back here. I'm gonna start with the circle composition. What I wanna do first is ensure that that spreadsheet is connected to this After Effects project. So I click on my Google Spreadsheet Setup dialog button, and here's my labels spreadsheet. And what I go ahead and do now is click the circle star uh, worksheet. So now I know that my After Effects project is linked to this worksheet rather than the diamond worksheet. Okay, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do now is, you know, preview using the next row. So I can see my terms are now changing within these layers. All the data is being injected from the spreadsheet. So if I preview the animation, you can see that the animation is intact, even though it's already got new data injected into those layers. Okay, so let's dig into this composition. I'm going to click on this comp right here and then kind of go down and dig deep in to see what's going on here. And what I want to take a look at first is this yummy text layer here. And I believe that's going to be text two. So I double click that and I'm going to kind of play this back and we can see that all this is doing is, you know, some characters that are animating on this path right here. So, you know, if I hit, you know, next row and kind of take a look at what's going on, you can see that I'm getting all of the, uh, the words from the spreadsheet there. Now, uh, you know, this doesn't have any scaling going on and there's no, um, you know, uh, alignment. So if I bring this up on my Templator settings, you can see there's actual, absolutely nothing, no rules applied to this layer. So all it's doing is getting data mapped. So, you know, again, I preview and I kind of make sure that it looks good. Now, in this particular scenario, um, you're going to have to make sure that, you know, the words themselves are going to fit. If you're not going to apply any rules to your layer, um, you know, you're going to have to do some pretty heavy previewing to ensure that, you know, the length of characters that you're using uh, makes sense for the animation that you've got going on. Now, if we back up and take a look at the overall animation again and then go back up to, you know, this ribbon text right here, double click into that and we are going to kind of preview this just to see what's going on so this is just kind of a range selector that's animating um, you know with a certain kind of procedural animation so let's take a look at how the rules that are applied to this ribbon layer uh, make sense for a procedural animation using the range selector I'm just gonna make my workspace a little bit better so we can kind of take a look at this time canvas and then extend this so we can really see what's going on with the effect. Now we can see here that, you know, we've got the range selector keys here. So let's go ahead and zoom up a little bit on that. And, you know, I don't want to get into the details of, you know, how I'm achieving this animation right here. But what's important to realize is that, you know, we, we do have some alignment rules going on. And, you know, I want to talk a little bit about that. So if we see, you know, if we back up, we zoom out and we kind of see what's going on with this layer. You can see how it stop, starts at the bottom right here at the first key, 
the last key is where you know things kind of end up you know when we look at the align to we can see it's at the bottom well uh, we also have a padding here of 98 so if I drop that down to zero and hit preview what you're gonna see is that it's actually gonna land on that bottom part of the containing composition and that's not essentially what we want we want to make sure that you know uh, we've got some padding and that it's aligning correctly but what's important to realize is that you know the alignment may not coincide with the first key when you're doing a range selector because the range selector is not a transform property it's part of this animator group in in a text layer so I just wanted to point that out in case you you know are going to use um, you're going to use templator when you have you know a lot of um, range selecting going on with your animation so you can see here that this is obviously problematic so you know it takes a little bit of iteration to get it right so you know before I showed you this project I actually you know worked on it so if I hit preview now it's going to align a place that I think is is proper so if I you know preview it on the actual graphic you can see it looks pretty good okay so we're back in the diamond composition and obviously this doesn't make sense so very handsome chocolate okay interesting uh, but let's go ahead and click on the Google spreadsheet setup and make sure that we're selecting the diamond worksheet from our spreadsheet so I click OK and if I do next row preview you can see that I'm getting in the data but that also when I you know RAM preview I'm actually you know everything is kind of intact uh, the animation is intact regardless of it being a procedural animation here or a path based animation or a you know transform animation so if I hit preview again you can see here that you know everything's intact so that's really nice so let's dig deep into this composition of this graphic to see what's going on okay so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this composition here and here's our you know label and let's go ahead and click on this one and this gets to you know the animation composition that has all of our layers and what I'm gonna go ahead and do for this example I'm just gonna kind of get into the ah, next one okay <clears throat> so here we have another procedural animation using a range selector if we just kind of zoom out of the timeline here and kind of check it out you can see it's just you know doing its thing and if I preview it you know it's doing its thing as well and it's also got a scale factor of 80% of its containing composition it's honoring that so that's good um, so you know I'll just preview again okay um, so you know because this isn't really moving around um, in terms of its position with the range selector it's pretty easy to uh, you know see, understand what templator settings is doing to this so I just wanted to point that out that you know so in some cases when you get involved in animating with kinetic type and you know you're using range selection uh, the templator settings may not behave in the way that you expect it to behave so the previewing is actually really critical to making a successful target render.